Well, praise God, everybody. Welcome, everyone, to Lesson 7 of our course, BTB 127, Old Testament Books of History, Part 2. And tonight, we're looking at the book of Esther. Wow, this is going to be great. Uh, what a great lady, Esther. Okay, her Hebrew name was Hadassah, and her... A Persian name was Esther, translates to star, the star, the star. We're going to look at the star, praise God. We're going to ask Minister Loretta to lead us in prayer tonight. Would you do that, for, please, dear? Yes. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this night. Father God, may you bless the man of God who's going to bring forth the Bible lesson which is on Esther. Father God, may your mercy fall upon him and his family and everyone who is hearing my voice. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for just surrounding us with your love. And Father God, may this lesson be a blessing to all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Minister Loretta. Amen. She's from Wilmington, Delaware. And uh, she's from Wilmington with Dr. Jean Bratton and um, yes. Dr. Dale and the great Living Water Fellowship. Praise God. And so we thank God for you. We thank God for all Amen. of you being with us tonight. And I want to encourage you as we continue in this uh, great course and, and this wonderful school, and as we continue day by day, keep your mind on Jesus. Keep your heart on Jesus. We're living in difficult times and a lot of hatred in this nation, a lot of drama. But we are believers and true believers. We should keep our minds on Jesus, worship him, and trust God at all times. In everything, give thanks Amen. unto God. Amen. I think that's the best advice I can give to any Christian today. If you're Amen. a true believer of God, you keep your mind on Jesus, stay in the yes. Word of God, and do what the Word of God says do. Please, ladies and gentlemen, do not allow any bitterness or anger or hatred dwell in your heart. It's a sin. It's a sin to even go to sleep at night with anger and bitterness in your heart. The Scripture says that we should not allow any anger uh, to... to, uh, to to cause us to sin. And so let's walk with, in the love of Jesus Christ. I know things get on your nerves. Things get on my nerves. we got some crazy folks in this country, but we've got to pray for them. But most of all, keep your mind on Jesus and walk in love. Walk in love towards one another. Not only in this nation, but we're, we're giving the same message to the international community. Walk in love. True believers walk in love. We're not vindictive. We're not full of hatred. And uh, our role is to walk in love. Let the love of Jesus Christ dwell in us. And hopefully others through us seeing Christ in us will get saved too. Hallelujah. Okay. Well, tonight um, we've got the precious Jackie Carter in the chat window. She's in the chat room, and um, she looks like she's ready to go. Okay, got that pretty smile on her face. And so <laughs> we're um, going to take a look at Esther, <clears throat> starting with chapter 1. I'm going to re read verse 1, and then verses 1 and 2, and then I'll give you a little background information. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus. Remember when we tackle these Hebrew names or these uh, Persian names, we take them one syllable at a time. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, that is Ahasuerus, Ahasuerus which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia over 127 and 20 provinces, that in those days, when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan, the palace. So this, the Bible lets us know in parentheses that we're talking about the Ahasuerus, which reigned over 127 provinces 
from India to Ethiopia. The Bible specifies that because there are several people named Ahasuerus. Ahasuerus was not the king's name, but the name, the title of the king. So this sheds a whole different light on things. The name Ahasuerus, uh, just like the name Cyrus and several others, gave you not the king's real name, but the title of the king who sat on the throne. So several kings called themselves Ahasuerus. Several kings called themselves Cyrus. Okay. Um, in the third year of the reign of Astyagus, that would be 32 years before the decree of Cyrus to restore Jerusalem and the temple. So when you look at the book of Esther, we want to put, put Esther between uh, somewhere between Ezra and Nehemiah. Historically, the writing would take place somewhere, the events took place somewhere between Ezra and Nehemiah. Nehemiah closes out Old Testament biblical history. Um, and so when we, um, when we look at Esther, when we finish the events of Esther, we're coming down to around 500 um, B.C. Um, and then we go to Nehemiah, and Nehemiah <laughs> takes us down to about 410, 403 B.C. Okay, so now if Mordecai went into captivity as a young man, and if Esther was born to, to his uncle, and Esther was the daughter of Mordecai's uncle, which made Esther and Mordecai cousins while in captivity, and she was now a virgin old enough to become the wife of the king, then Mordecai was perhaps... The guess is that Mordecai was perhaps 48 to 58 years of age when Esther married Astyagus, or Darius the Mede. So Esther was married to Astyagus, Darius the Mede, or Darius the Persian. In this case, he was the Mordecai of Ezra 2.2 who went back to Jer Judah from captivity. In Ezra... To second chapter, second verse, we see in that genealogy as Mordecai. Mordecai was one of the captives who returned. It is believed that um, uh, Mordecai was was taken into captivity when he was young, probably about ten or eleven years old. He outlived the whole captivity, seventy years, and then he had to be in his eighties, at least his eighties and his 90s when he came out of captivity. The guess that he was between 80 and 92 years old when he came out of the activity, out of the captivity with the exiles who returned under Ezra. Does anybody have any questions on, on this historical description at this particular time? We want to kind of place Ezra and Mordecai, and Esther, and Nehemiah in their pro proper perspective. Okay, once again, Mordecai was taken as one of the captives um, into Babylon. He was about 10 or 11 years old. He outlived the captivity, so that adds 70 years on him. It made him at least 81, 82 years old. Uh, he could have been much older. So at the time of the events, uh, when Esther gets married, it looks like Mordecai was about 48, 50 years old. So, um, and then um, this places Esther in a very important position because Esther uh, is going to stand in the gap, ladies and gentlemen, for a whole nation of people who have the death sentence on them. So if it had not been, been an Esther, there uh, might not have been any, any, any relief from destruction and, 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 uh, and the doom of the entire Jewish race of people. Keep in mind, the Bible tells us, Ahasuerus reigned over 127 provinces. 127 nations were under the the authority of the king of Persia. 
Okay. Verse 3. In the third year of his reign, Ahasuerus made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of Persia and Media, the nobles and princes of the provinces being before him. So Ahasuerus had a big celebration in his third year of his, of his reign, and he wanted to celebrate his power and the glory of his nation. So he called all his nobles, all the princes from the various countries, and had a multi-day celebration and feast. He showed them the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty, um, even a hundred and four score days, a hundred and eighty days, ladies and gentlemen. That party lasted a hundred and eighty days. That's some kind of party. They party. Okay. Verse 5, Esther chapter 1. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan, the palace, or Susa, both great and, unto great and small. Verse 6 uh, describes uh, the palace. Verse 7, they gave them drink in vessels of gold. Uh, verse 8, the drinking was according to the law, so you could legally get drunk because the king said get drunk. Okay, the king said don't wear your mask. You can get drunk. It's legal to get drunk. Okay, it's legal to go out there and, and, and mingle among a crowd. You can do so. The king said so. And so um, the king said that drinking was according to the law, so everyone did according to his own pleasure. Verse 9, also Vashti, the queen, made a feast for the women in the royal house which belonged to King Ahasuerus. In Persian culture, the king did not have his celebrations or feasts in the same room where the queen had hers. They had separate rooms, separate banquet halls. Verse 10, on the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine. In other words, the king was drunk, ladies and gentlemen. He was stoned. Uh, on the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehuman, Bistha, Harbona, Bigtha. You remember Bigtha, don't you? And Ag Abaga Abagtha, Zethar, and Carcass. The seven chamberlains that served in the presence of Ahasuerus the king, when the king's heart was filled with wine, ladies and gentlemen, he was high as a kite. Then he commanded these eunuchs, verse 11, to bring Vashti the queen before the king with the, royal, with the crown royal, to show the people and the princess her beauty, for we, she, for she was she, she was fair to look on. <clears throat> So when the king got his belly full of wine, he told those eunuchs, go and bring Vashti the queen, and, and, and I want to show her off in front of all of my friends, and I want them to see her beauty. Verse 12, but the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's command, commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him. The queen refused to come. The king wanted to show her off to all his friends. He wanted to expose her beauty to the friends. You don't know what the king wanted to expose to all the people, but that was his wife, and, 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 and she was under obedience to the king. The law says that anyone did not obey the king. The king could put them to death. Verse 13, then the king said to the wise men, which knew the times, for so was the king's manner toward all that new law and judgment. And um, what shall we do in verse 15? What shall we do unto the queen Vashti according to law? Because she had not performed the commandment of the king Ahasuerus by the chamberlains. So Memucan and others, uh, leaders, um, proposed to the king as we look down 16, 17, and 18. Well, you know, if she disobeyed the king, then all the women in Persia and all the women in the, 
in the provinces will disobey their husbands. And so that's the way these, these guys were thinking. All the women will rebel against their husbands. And we have no women obeying us. And so they came to the conclusion to recommend to the king, get rid of her. Put her out of the kingdom. Get you another wife. And so the king uh, obeyed the, the leaders and their consent. And they sent letters, verse 22, unto all the king's provinces, into every province according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, that every man should rule, bear rule in his own house, and that it should be published according to the language of every people. So they were threatened. They were afraid that the women would rise up and take over because the queen refused to come to a, a party of drunks and expose herself. And so that's the way the, the Babylonians, the Persians were thinking. Chapter 2, after these days, when the wrath of King Ahasuerus was appeased, he remembered Vashti and what she had done and what, and what was decreed against her. Now the king, so, he, he sobered up, ladies and gentlemen, and he started missing his, his wife. And, but he remembered what he had done. Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, let there be fair young virgins sought for the king. Now the king had put her away. We don't know if he killed her, had her killed, but he put her away. She was dethroned. And so here he is without a wife. Uh, he's, got all, he's got a harem now. He's got a harem, but he doesn't have a queen. And so he says, well, what shall we do? And um, verse 2 of chapter 2, let there be fair young virgins sought for the king, and let the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom, that they may gather together all the fair young virgins unto Shushan the palace, to the house of the women, unto the custody of Hege, the king's chamberlain, keeper of the women and let their things for purification be given them and so uh, the, the conclusion was let's have a contest let's bring in invite all the beautiful women from the 127 provinces to the house of the keeper of of of, of the eunuchs and that was Hege's house and let every woman uh, get all of the purification uh, ointments and, and, and perfumes that they need, and they will have a, a year, a year to prepare themselves to go before the king. <clears throat> Verse 4, chapter 2, And let the maiden which pleaseth the king be queen instead of Vashti. And the thing pleased the king, and he did so. So the king, hey, look, he was able to look over all the beautiful women over all, from all the world who had come to prepare themselves, and they would present themselves for the, before the king, and the king would choose the one that uh, touched his heart the most, and she would be the new queen. A lot of guys would be glad to have that kind of uh, uh, a situation set up, Ryan, and um, a lot of guys would love that situation. Verse uh, five. Now in Shushan the palace there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjamite. God always has a plan, ladies and gentlemen. God's got a plan. God's got a plan today. God knows why these things are happening today. He's got the plan. So here's a certain Jew in in. Shushan, the palace, he was carried away. His name was Mordecai. Historical record says he was carried away with the captivity of Nebuchadnezzar into Babylon. And then he wound up in, uh, in, in uh, Shushan, the capital. He had been carried away uh, with Jeconiah, the king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king, carried away. Verse 7 and he brought up Hadassah, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter. For she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, 
when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. So Esther's cousin Mordecai, who was older than Esther, he raised Esther as his own daughter. He was Esther's cousin. Verse 8, so it came to pass when the king's commandment and his decree was heard, and when many maidens were gathered together unto Shushan the palace to the custody of Haggai, or Haggai, that Esther was brought also into the king's house to the custody of Haggai, keeper of the women. Verse 9, and the maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness of him, and he speedily gave her her thanks for purification. Even the, the leader of the eunuchs recognized this was a beautiful woman, so he made uh, without haste, with, I mean without a delay, he hastily gave her whatever she needed for purification uh, so she could prepare herself to go before the king. And the rest of verse 9 says, And he preferred her and her maids unto the best place of the house of the women. So this Esther must have been a beauty. Uh, he gave her the best place of all the women. Verse 10, Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred. This is very important, ladies and gentlemen, to this study of Esther. Verse 10 says, she had not showed her people nor her kindred. In other words, she did not, I, she did not reveal to of the king, uh, to the king or to anyone else there, that she was a Jewish woman. These were Mordecai's orders. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the, when we look at the study of Esther, we see a woman who was very loyal and faithful and obedient to Mordecai, who became her stepfather, who actually was her cousin. He, she obeyed him in everything that he said. This is very important to the, the success of Esther and to the, um, the, the uh, posterity of the Jewish nation. It was her obedience that got this nation uh, uh, saved from destruction. Verse 11, and Mordecai walked every day before the court of the kings of the woman's house to know how Esther did and what should become of her. So when Esther went in to see the king and prepare herself to go before the king, Mordecai told her, do not tell anybody you are a Jew. But Mordecai walked every day before her house to see how things were going with her. Verse 12, now when every maid's turn was come to go into King Ahasuerus, after that she had been 12 months, according to the manner of women, for so were the days of her purification accomplished, to wit, six months with oil of myrrh, and six months with sweet odors, and with other things for purifying of the women. Now look here, ladies, if, they get, if you had a free six free months of perfumes and oils, and six free months of massages and treatments and all that. Uh, and, and after that, after 12 months, I mean, you, you ought to be a knockout. Now, six months of purification with oil and six months of ointments can't help you. Uh, I don't, you're, <clears throat> you're on some kind of list. Uh, but uh, six, 12 months should do it for anybody. 12 months should, should enable you to catch somebody's eye. Okay, now, um, let's fast forward a little bit. Verse 15, now when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Ab Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go in unto the king, she required nothing but what Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women, appointed. In other, in other words, in other words, ladies and gentlemen, this woman, Esther, Hadassah, the star, she was so beautiful. She didn't even need all these perfumes and ointments and the makeup and the eyeliner and the eye pencil and the false eyelashes and the lipstick and the rouge and all of that. She didn't need any of that, ladies and gentlemen, according to verse 15. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. 
Verse 16, so Esther was taken unto King Ahasuerus into his house royal in the tenth month, which is the month Tebeth, in the seventh year of his reign. Verse 17, and the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained favor, grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon his head, her her. <laughs> not if, whoa, let me just do this right. And he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. So, ladies and gentlemen, when Esther walked in to present herself before the king, the king declared, contest over. Give me the royal crown. The contest is over. The contest is over. He took one look at Esther, and the contest was over. Like when I first saw Jackie Carter, ja it, was, it was Jackie Henry at that time. Contest is over, Gene Bratton. Contest is over. The, the, the contest is closed. Give me the royal crown. And he put the royal crown on Esther. The contest was over. All those other women had to go. Look, Jackie Carter shaking her head. The the the, all those other women from 127 different countries, they had to pack their bags and get their flights back to their country. They had to pack their bags because this lady named Esther Hadassah walked into the contest to present herself before the king, and the king took one look at her, and he was blown off the globe. I mean, he lost his mind when he saw her. Uh, uh, I know how the king felt. I, I know that. When I, I, I took one look at Jackie, uh, oh, Lord, Jesus. I, I know it, it's possible, ladies and gentlemen. It's possible. Okay? Okay, all right. So Esther was chosen. Esther was chosen. Verse 21, in those days while Mordecai sat at the king's gate, in the king's gate, two of the king's chamberlains, two, two eunuchs, Bigfen and Teresh, of those which kept the door, were wroth. They were angry at the king, and they sought to lay hand on the king Ahasuerus. See, Mordecai was a very shrewd man. Even when Esther be, was uh, pronounced the queen and Esther moved into the palace, Mordecai, very uh uh, suavely stayed in front of the uh, palace. He walked in front of the gate, and he had uh, a messenger who would send him news, and, and Esther would send messages out to Mordecai. So Mordecai kept in touch with her. But he, rem he reminded her, do not tell anyone that you're a Jew. And so Mordecai heard of this plot by a big fan in Teresh to, ki to kill the king. And the thing was known to Mordecai, who told it to Esther the queen, and Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. Verse 22. In other words, he sent that message to Esther that Big Fan and Teresh were plotting to kill the king. And so Esther certified. She told the king that information, and it was documented that the information came from Mordecai. That's what it means when it says Esther certified the kings thereof in Mordecai's name. She gave the information to the king. He was able to discover the plot, and, and, and um, he actually uh, put those two men to death. You see the word inquisition in verse 23. And when inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out. Therefore, they were both hanged on a tree. And it was written in the book of the Chronicles before the king. They hang, he hanged those two on the tree. And, uh, but, but the king uh, never, never knew, actually. He, he, he never knew because... Um, uh, what had, what had become of Mordecai. The king was busy about his business, but it was documented by the king's chroniclers that Mordecai had given the king that information. Speaking of hanging on the trees, there have been several African Americans found hanging from trees in uh, Los Angeles, California, and Georgia, and some other places. Now, let me tell you something about African American men, ladies and gentlemen. 
African American men do not hang themselves. African American men from the time uh, uh, blacks were first brought into this country in 1619, the first 19 slaves, African American men do not hang themselves. And so uh, we need a thorough investigation and prosecution and justice in this nation about these mysterious hangings. Uh, they're finding in the last week they found three people in different parts of the country hanging from trees. So that's a plot. Uh, uh, we, we, we rebuke this in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that you will expose whoever's doing this. Uh, it se seems to me that there is an organized plot. Okay? Uh, these terroristic things going on in America. African American men do not commit suicide when you look at suicide and definitely do not hang themselves. And African American men have been able to tough it out uh, through a whole lot of different things. But you don't find African-American men jumping off buildings because they lost their financial empire. Why? Because most African-American men don't have financial empires or reasons to jump off a building. So that's just a little aside, and we will get justice in that area. Chapter 3, uh, the shift goes to Haman, a man named Haman. After these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, Agag and advanced him and set his seat above all the princes that were before him. So nothing happened to Mordecai. The king didn't even know who Mordecai was. Mordecai walked out in front of the king's gate every day. Uh, he, the king has no clue that Mordecai is related to Esther, his wife, and Mordecai, who saved the king from an assassination plot, uh, doesn't get any recognition, but it's chronicled. It's written in the chronicles. The king had not read the chronicles. Okay, so the king promoted Haman uh, above everyone else in the kingdom, and Haman is like second to the king in the kingdom. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him. But Mordecai bowed not for he did not reverence him. And so uh, everybody was bowing down before Haman cause, because the king required that everyone bow down before Haman. But Mordecai did not bow down. Mordecai didn't bow down to anybody but God. Mordecai was from the same school that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went to. He's from, he's from the same school that Daniel went to. They did not bow down to anybody but the Most High God. And so the servants of the king uh, sent word to the king, uh, sent word that um, Mordecai was not bowing down. Well, well, let me read verse 3. Then the king's servants, which were in the king's gates, said unto Mordecai, Why transgressest thou the king's commandment? Now it came to pass, when they spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matters would stand, whether Mordecai's matters would stand, for he had told them that he was a Jew. So the, the servants asked, why aren't you bowing down? And Mordecai didn't say anything to them. So they told Haman, verse 5, and Haman, when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. Haman not only hated Mordecai, but as we see, as this drama unfolds, Haman hated Mordecai's people, the Jewish people. Ladies and gentlemen, we got some pompous people in our nation and in other nations who think they're above everybody else and that everyone else ought to bow down and kiss the ground that they walk on. We got some folks in Washington, D.C., so high and so pompous that if you don't bow down before some of them, you get fired and somebody else will take your place. Verse 6, And Haman thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for they had showed him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore, Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus. So Haman's original idea, he hated this guy who would not bow down before him, Mordecai, and Haman thought to do him harm. But then when the servants told Haman that, that um, Mordecai was a Jew, 
and that there were a lot of people like him who would not bow down before him, then Haman became very, very wroth. And so, verse 8, Haman said unto the king Ahasuerus, and here, ladies and gentlemen, you think fake news is prominent today. Fake news is nothing new. Fake news goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden when uh, Satan whispered uh, uh, lies into Eve's ear and, and deceived Adam and Eve. Verse 8, Haman said unto the king Ahasuerus, There's a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of thy kingdom. And their laws are diverse from all people. Neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them. Fake news, ladies and gentlemen. The Jews have been brought into captivity into Babylon, which is now Persia at this time. And Haman tells the king, there's a certain group of people. They're not going to obey your laws. They plot against you. They're, they're disruptive. They're rebellious. And they, they mean you no good. It wouldn't profit you, profit you, king, to allow these people to live. That's from verse 8. Verse 9. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed. And I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that are charged of the business to bring it into the king's treasuries. O king, if you let me handle this matter, I'll put a whole lot of money in your treasury. Just let me handle these people. Verse 10, And the king took his ring from his hand and gave it unto Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, the Jew's enemy. The king just took his, his ring off, which uh, contained the, the royal seal, which meant that any decree that Haman would write once he sealed it with the king's seal, it was law. And once a law had been written and declared, it could not be reversed. Ladies and gentlemen, it is very important in the study of Esther to know that when a decree went out, it could not be abrogated. It could not be reversed. The law was the law. Uh, when, when Vashti refused to... Um, Expose herself to the king's friends during that wild, drunken party. The king, as a result, wrote a decree and sealed it with his, go his seal. And whatever he wrote, it was law. It could not be reversed. And in this situation, when the king took off his ring, he gave Haman the authority to do whatever he wanted to do with his people, even though the king didn't know who these people were. So, this is drama. This is very dramatic. This is dramatic. Okay, verse 12. Then were the king's scribes called on the 13th day of the first month. And there was written according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenants and to the governors that were to over every province and to the rulers of every people of every province according to the writing thereof and to every people after their language in the name of King Ahasuerus was it written and sealed with the king's ring. Ahasuerus had no clue what was written in this decree. He just gave all that authority over to Haman. Haman wrote the decree, sealed it with the king's ring, and it became law to every province, 120 provinces. We're talking about Jews scattered in 127 nations, ladies and gentlemen, that they were to receive the death sentence. The death sentence. Why? Because one man, Mordecai, would not bow before Pompous before pompous Haman. You know, there are people who think the world owes them. There are people who, who think they are entitled to our loyalty and, uh, and that we, we're to be their slaves and, and be uh, servants of them. Uh, uh, there are people uh, who think that certain people ought to be their, 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 uh, uh, so ought to be subservient to them. We owe them something. Even, even ladies and gentlemen, uh, their households where kids think their parents 
are to be their slaves. This is, you know, Satan has, has so, it, it, uh, it touched the hearts of men and women with pride that people think other people owe them something. So the letters were, letters were sent out and, and the, the death sentence to the Jews. Verse 13 of chapter 3, and the letters were sent by post unto all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in one day, even upon the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month Adar, to take the spoil of them for a prey. This was a real plot, ladies and gentlemen, a real plot. And in this country, they, you know, you know uh, it's, it's amazing. The Ku Klux Klan has never been declared uh, a, a terrorist organization, uh, a hate group. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's in this country, in the United States of America, certain groups have never been declared to be hate groups. Uh, or certain police units have never been declared to be hate groups, that they are above the law. Uh, certain legislators, certain people, certain congressmen, uh, uh, certain organizations are above the law, and, 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 and certain Masonic orders, certain leaders of the Masons, above the law. They can do anything they want. They can, they can uh, 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 mess over as many people as they want, and they are above the law. And the sad thing is you've got judges, judges, you've got legislators, you even have the attorney general scared to prosecute certain people, knowing that people... Or have violated the law, but yet allow these persons and these groups to exist and to continue to exist right here in this nation, ladies and gentlemen. That's why this whole revolution is taking place right now. Okay, so the copy of the writing, verse 14, to be given in every province was published unto all people that they should be ready against that day. The post went out, being hastened by the king's commandment, and the decree was given in Shushan the palace. And the king and Haman sat down to drink. But the city Shushan was perplexed. Haman wrote his, his uh, 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 devious letter, had copies made, and sent them out to every province in the world that on a certain day, on the 13th day of the last month of the year, every person in every province was to rise up and kill every Jew in every province. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that was the death sentence. And we've seen throughout history others who have decreed death sentences on the Jews We've seen death sentences against the Cherokee Indians, the Sioux Indians, the Arapahoes, the Crees, the Apaches. We've seen death sentences against certain people. And, 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 and even in this nation, people who think their job is to kill, and, and, and they are allowed to kill. They're allowed to hang people from trees without uh, uh, a prosecution. They're allowed to drag people on back of their pickup trucks without prosecution. They're allowed to burn uh, churches and burn little girls in church in Sunday school without prosecution. And 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 uh, these uh, the Scottsboro boys back in the early 1900s, uh, uh, they're allowed to uh, uh, prosecute and 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 lynch people based on some lie from uh, uh, from lying woman saying he raped me or he winked at me, he whistled at me. And the, the law does not prosecute the perpetrators because the perpetrator, the perp and those same perpetrators put on those hoods, go back to the job, bankers, preachers, teachers, lawyers, uh, uh, mayors, sheriffs, without, without, imp with, uh, with impunity, without, without any kind of, 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 of uh, punishment. And that's why people are angry today all over this nation. White people, black people, brown people, yellow people, red people, green people, purple people, pink people. People are angry because they're tired, sick and tired, and sick and tired of the fact that, 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 that certain people 
are allowed to do certain things to certain people without punishment, and it's been going on for centuries. And now people are saying enough is enough. Enough is enough. Well, back to Esther. Chapter 4, when Mordecai, Ladies and gentlemen, God has his people placed where he wants them for his time. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, he rent all his clothes, put on sackcloth and ashes, and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and bitter voice. And it came before the king's gate, for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. You could not enter into the king's gate with sackcloth and ashes on. And in every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews, and fasting and weeping and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. Ladies and gentlemen, because the Jewish people knew that on the 13th day of the last month of the year, they were going to be killed, regardless of what country they lived in, the people were going to obey the commandment of the king, even though, listen, listen, even though the king did not know that he made that commandment. He gave that authority to do whatever he wanted to do to whoever he wanted to do. He gave that authority to Haman, and the king had no clue that the Jews were going to be put to death on, the, on that certain day. Haman knew about it. And ladies and gentlemen, you've got devious things uh, even here in America, plots against people. Uh, I wrote a book. I wrote a book uh, about the giants are back. And in the in the in the book, a lot of people got mad at me because I said talked about a meeting of of of, of certain politicians, and they met with certain governors, certain leaders, and certain businessmen, and, and they had a meeting, and and, and Satan chair that meeting and said we're not gonna we're not gonna do anything uh anymore to help certain people in this country and, and we're not gonna work with a certain president. We're gonna we're gonna uh take back what we had before this president was elected and they sat for eight years and did nothing. And after that eight years was over we, we had that retaliation that we're experiencing in this country today retaliation retaliation make america great again they say make america great again well ladies and gentlemen america ain't never been great as long as there's hatred there's been no greatness and in your country if you're in england uh make england great again you can't be great if you if you've got a history of, of persecuting people make china great again no you'll never be great again if you're persecuting people make russia great again no you'll never be great and, or, or make your household great again. Your household would not be great if you have a household where you hate on people. Anyhow, the Jews were fasting and crying and grieving all over the world as the clock ticked, as the clock ticked, the clock ticked. And uh, so meanwhile, back in Shushan, Haman, man, he's riding high. He's the second, second in charge of the nation. Man, he's got right, he riding the king's chariot. Man, everybody bowing down to him except for Mordecai, and 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 he he just knows he's somebody big, okay. And so Esther gets a message from Mordecai. Mordecai sends it through one of Esther's maidens. Verse 4, so Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told it her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved, and she sent raiment to clothe Mordecai. She heard about Mordecai outside the gate, wearing sackcloth and ashes, and grieving, throwing dust in the air. And she wanted to know what's going on. Here, put these fresh clothes on. Then called Esther for Hatach one of the king's chamberlains whom he had appointed to attend upon her and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. She sent a message to Mordecai. Hey, what's going on? Hey, tell me, what's going on out there? Because she didn't know what was going on. All she knew was Mordecai was out there grieving, wearing sackcloth and ashes, and people grieving throughout the city. 
So Hatash went forth to Mordecai unto the street of the city, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him and of the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the Jews to destroy them. Mordecai sent the message to Esther about how Haman had, 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 had gotten the king's permission to kill the Jews and that Mordecai, that Haman would pay for the death of destruct, and destruction of all the Jews in the world. Also, verse 8, listen to this. Mordecai gave Hatach the copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Shushan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther, and to declare it unto her, and to charge her that she would go in unto the king to make supplication unto him and to make request before him for her people. Mordecai, woo, he sends a, a message to Esther. He sends a copy of the decree that Haman had written with the king's uh, seal on it, and, and he gave orders. He gave orders. This is why it is all so important to obey your parents, okay? Oh, honor your father and mother. Esther had no mother and father. They died uh, when she was young, and Mordecai became her father, and she honored him and obeyed him, even to the point where he said, don't tell anybody who you are. She obeyed him all her life. And then he sent this, this, this powerful uh, uh, message to her that she has to go into the king. It's your job to go and see the king about these things that are, that are about to take place and to go to the king and make a request for your people. Verse 9, And Hatach came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Again, Esther spoke unto Hatach and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and all the people of the king's provinces do know Esther laid it on the line that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king into the inner court who is not called, I don't care who it is, anybody, even the queen, if you're not called by the king and you can't come into his inner court, there is one law of his to put that person to death except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter that he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these 30 days. Esther said, whoa, 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 tell Mordecai. Whoa, this is some heavy stuff he done laid on me. Whoa, tell him. Look, look, everybody in every province knows you don't just walk into the king's presence. I'm the queen. The queen can't even walk into her husband's presence unless he holds out that golden scepter, which is an invitation. And look here. Hey, dig it. I have not been invited to see the king in the last 30 days. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Listen, Mordecai is a tough man. Oh, I love Mordecai. Verse 13 of chapter 4. Then Mordecai commandeth, answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. Hey, look here, daughter. Now, he didn't put, didn't put daughter in there because he didn't expose her relationship to him yet. Look here. Don't think that you will survive just because you're the queen. For thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time. Then there shall enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth? Check this out. I love it. I love it. Gene Bratton, I love this. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Jackie Carter, who knows whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Verse 15, then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Woo! One of the greatest answers ever given out of the mouth of a person. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan. And fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, day, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, 
I perish. Ladies and gentlemen, Esther knew the burden. She knew what had to be done. And she sent Mordecai this answer, go gather all the Jewish people in the capital city of Shushan and command them to fast three days with me. Tell them not to eat any food or to drink any drink. And I and my maidens also will fast likewise. And so after this fast, I will go into the king. It's not according to the law. I'm going to break the law. I'm going to break the law. If I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a group calling a fast for the 30th of June and two the 3rd of July is going to be an Esther fast. You need to look it up on the web and check it out. Um, I haven't investigated it thoroughly, but there's an Esther fast. I hope it's for the nation. I hope it's all for the right cause. But they're calling for an Esther fast from June 30th through July 3rd. I'll do some investigation on that. Okay, hopefully have your a report for you next week. <clears throat> Okay, and so you think we're, we're, this is drama so far. The, the drama ain't started yet. And so Esther, I mean Esther, she realizes what she has to do. Like Popeye the sailor man. See, he saw his duty and he did it. Okay, uh, she knew what she had to do. And so she prepared herself. Verse 5, chapter 5, verse 1, she put on her royal apparel. She stood in the inner court of the king's house, over against the king's house, and the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house, over against the gate of the house. And so it was when the king saw Esther, the queen, standing in the court, that she obtained favor in his sight. Look at God. Look at God. I mean, the king's eyes have been blind. He hadn't even called her in for 30 days. And so God I had them go on a fast and opened the king's eyes, and he saw how lovely she was and 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 uh so he held out so esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter he held out the royal scepter he took a good look good good look then said the king unto her what wilt thou queen esther i mean esther must have been looking good she must have been looking some kind of good what wilt thou queen esther and what is thy request it shall be even given thee to the half of the kingdom what 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 is your request, my queen? I'll give you anything up to one half of my kingdom. I'll give you a half of my kingdom. What's your request? And Esther answered, If it seemed good unto the king, uh, I'm not. She was smooth. She was smooth. She wasn't panicking. She was smooth. She said, If it be seem good unto the king, <laughs> let the king and Haman come this day unto the banquet that I have prepared for him. I just want you to come to a little banquet. <laughs> then the king said, Cause Haman to make haste, that he may do as Esther has said. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. And the king said unto Esther at the banquet of wine, it was a banquet of wine, What is thy petition? What is it you want? And what is thy request? Even to the half of my kingdom it shall be performed. Then said Esther, then answered Esther and said, My petition and my request is, if I have found favor in the sight of the king, and if it please the king to grant my petition and to perform my request, let the king and Haman come to the banquet that I shall prepare for them, and I will do tomorrow as the king has said. So if and Esther said, I mean, she was suave, she was sweet. Uh, it, let the king and Haman come again tomorrow to another banquet that I want, another dinner I want to give for you. Verse 9, Then went Haman forth that day joyful and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he stood not up nor moved for him, he was full of indignation against Mordecai. Haman left that banquet all puffed up in pride. The queen has invited me to 
two days of banqueting. But then when he saw Mordecai, he was wroth with anger and bitterness and hatred and, and uh, deception and deceit. Nevertheless, Haman refrained himself, and when he came home, he sent and called for his friends and Zeresh, his wife. And Haman told them of the rich, glory of his riches and the multitude of his children and the things wherein the king had promoted him and how he had advanced him above the princes and servants of the king. Haman sure showed off that night how great he was and how great he was with the king. Haman said, moreover, yea, Esther the queen did not let man come in with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared but myself. I'm the only one she allowed into that banquet. And tomorrow his chest was all up. And tomorrow I'm invited unto her also with the king. Yet all this availeth me nothing, he says, so long as I see that Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. Then said Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends unto him, Let a gallows be made of fifty cubits high, and tomorrow speak thou unto the king, that Mordecai may be hanged thereon. Then go thou in merrily with the king unto the banquet. And the thing pleased Haman, and he caused the gallows to be made. You know, you can get some wrong advice from the wrong people, ladies and gentlemen. That's why the Bible says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Okay, but listen, that night, that night, uh, God did an amazing thing in the heart of the king. And ladies and gentlemen, don't fret about these things going on around us. Let us stay faithful to God. Continue to love the Lord. Be humble. Walk by faith and not by sight and worship God. God is going to do a new thing in this nation and in the nations of the world. God is in control. He's in control. On that night, verse chapter 6, on that night could not the king sleep, and he commanded the to bring the book of the records of the chronicles. And they were read before the king. Now this was the book of the records of the, of the chronicles of, of the, the kings of the Medeans and the Persians. The history book. And, and the king commanded that the books, the records be, be brought in. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Big Thana and Teresh two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hand on the king of Ahasuerus. They read to the king about how Mordecai thwarted that assassination plot and saved the king's life. Verse 3, And the king said, What honor and dignity hath been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, There is nothing done for him. And at the same time, Haman appears in the court, and he comes in and talks to the king to speak to the king about hanging Mordecai on the gallows. And the king's servant said unto him, verse 4, 5, Behold, Haman standeth in the court. And the king said, Let him come in. So Haman came in. This is for the second banquet, ladies and gentlemen. And Haman answered the king for the man. Uh, 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 this is before the second banquet. Haman comes in, and, and um, Haman says to the king, well, to whom would the king delight to do honor more than to myself? Uh, he thinks he's going to get honored. But the king has found out that Mordecai deserves the honor. Haman answered the king, for the man whom the king delighted to honor, let the royal apparel be brought, which the king useth to wear, and the horse that the king rides on, and the royal crown which is set upon his head, and let this apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of the one of the king's most noble princes, that they may array the man withal whom the king delighted to honor, and bring him on horseback through the streets of the city, and proclaim before him, thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor. Then the king said to Haman, Make haste, and take the apparel on the horse, as thou hast said, and do even so to Mordecai the Jew, 
that sitteth in the king's gate. Let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. Then took Haman the apparel and the horse and arrayed Mordecai. That broke Haman's heart that he had to honor Mordecai because Haman thought he was getting honored. Broke his heart. Verse 12, Mordecai came again to the king's gate, but Haman hastened to the house mourning, having his head covered. Haman had to go home in shame. He thought he was somebody. And then Haman told Zeresh, his wife, and his friends what had happened. And Zeresh, his wife, said unto him, If Mordecai be of the seed of the Jews, before whom thou hast begun to fall, she already told you, you fallen. You, you going down. His wife, his wife said, if Mordecai be a Jew, and these are people you're against, and, 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 and uh, you're beginning to fall already, you're going down. Thou shalt not prevail against him, but shall surely fall before him. Verse 14, and while they were yet talking with him, came the king's chamberlains and hastened to bring Haman unto the banquet that Esther had prepared. Esther had requested a second night of banqueting. Now she's going to, Esther is going to really perform. She's going to really perform. Okay? All right. So the king and Haman came to the banquet with Esther the queen. Chapter 7. And the king said unto Esther on the second day at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition, Queen Esther? And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? And it shall be formed even perform even to the half of the kingdom. Baby, I'll give you even half of my kingdom. What is your request? Then Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition and my people at my request. Here's where she's going to expose to the king who she is. The king has no idea that she's a Jew. He has no idea that the Jewish people have been set aside to be exterminated worldwide on the 13th day of the last month of the year. For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. But if we had been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, or if we had been sold as slaves, I would have held my tongue, although the enemy could not countervail the king's damage. She said, I and my people have been set up to be destroyed, to die on a certain day. Verse 5, Then the king Ahasuerus answered and said unto the Esther the queen, Who is he? Where is he that durst presume in his heart to do so? The king's eyes were open. He's, he realized he had given authority to somebody to do this and, uh, and destroy people. And Esther identifies with the very people who will be destroyed. And the king said, who is this? Who did this? And Esther said, and I don't think she is real cute when she said this. She said, verse 6, the adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. I don't think she said it like, the adversary and the enemy is this wicked Haman. I think she said, the adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. Then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. Ladies and gentlemen, the drama does not stop there. Verse 7, and the king, arising from the banquet of wine in his wrath, went into the palace garden, and Haman stood up to make requests for his life to Esther the queen, for he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king. Haman knew his day was over. He knew his day was, his day was over, and the king got up and walked out into his garden trying to figure out what kind of, what kind of punishment am I going to give uh, against this guy. This guy has disgraced me. He's, he's sentenced to death all the Jews in the world and, and, and embarrassed me and, and this and that. Verse 8, then the king returned out of the palace garden unto the place of the banquet of wine. Now, I told you the drama was not finished yet. And Haman was fallen upon the bed where Esther was. Ooh, 
the king walks back in and finds a Haman laying on top of Esther. He had fallen on her bed trying to plead for his life. Then said the king, will he force the queen also before me in the house? As the word went out of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. Ladies and gentlemen, you say, who were they? The eunuchs, the chamberlain, chamber, chamberlain, the chamberlain uh, people, the eunuchs. As the words came out of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. They put a covering over his face. In other words, they're going to kill that dude. They blindfolded him. And Harbona, one of the chamberlains, said before the king, Behold also the gallows, 50 cubits high, which Haman had made for Mordecai, who had spoken good for the king, standeth in the house of Haman. Then the king said, Hang him thereon. Hang him. Hang him. They said, you know, uh, Haman made, built this gallows 50 cubits high to hang Mordecai. And Mordecai is the one who honored you, O king. So what should we do with Haman? Hang him on his own gallows. Verse 10, so they hang Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. Not only did they hang Haman, later on in this book, you'll see they hang his ten sons also in, in case, just in case the apple didn't fall far from the tree. But that's not over. The drama's not over yet. Ladies and gentlemen, Haman's killed. The plot's exposed. Esther reveals her identity. And, 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 and now God's going to promote Mordecai. It pays to be faithful to the Lord where God plants you. On that day did the king of Hasuerus give the house of Haman, the Jew's enemy, unto Esther the queen. And Mordecai came before the king, and Esther had told what he was unto her. She revealed that this was her father. And the king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman. He took that ring back. He took that ring back from Haman, took it off Haman. And gave it unto Mordecai. And Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. Praise God. It's so wonderful when God promotes you. Not when kings promote you, because kings promote you and they demote you. Uh, 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 the king took the ring off Haman's finger before they put Haman to death and gave that ring to Mordecai. God promoted Mordecai. And yet, Esther spoke. Yet again before the king and fell down at his feet. Ladies and gentlemen, Esther fell down at the feet of her husband, the king, and besought him with tears to put away the mischief of Haman, the Agagite. The adventure, the, the drama's not over yet. She falls on her knees before the king and, 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 and urges the king to put away the mischievous device that Haman had plotted against the Jewish people. Then the king, verse 4 of chapter 8, held out the golden scepter unto Esther, to Esther. So Esther arose and stood before the king and said, If it please the king, and if I found favor in his sight, and the thing seem right before the king, and I be pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman, the son of Hamadatha the Agagite, which he wrote to destroy the Jews, which are in all the king's provinces. Ladies and gentlemen, once a king issued a decree, it could not be reversed. And so Esther had to get the king to write another decree, which would cancel out the previous decree. Verse 6, For how can I endure to see the evil that shall come unto my people? How can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? Then the king Ahasuerus said unto Esther the queen and to Mordecai the Jew, Behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman and him that have hanged upon the gallows because he laid his hand upon the Jews. Write, verse 8, Write ye also for the Jews as it liketh you. In other words, write whatever decree you want to write, Esther, in benefit of the Jews. 
in the king's name and seal it with the king's ring for the writing which is written in the king's name and sealed with the king's ring may no man reverse. So the king told Esther, here, you write what you want to write. Here's my ring. You go ahead and write whatever you need to write to save the Jewish people. Woo! That's God on the move, ladies and gentlemen. God will fight your battles. You just be still. Keep on being faithful. Don't quit. Don't give up. No, don't be burning down buildings and rocking police cars and that sort of You wait on the Lord. You trust in the Lord. Then were the king's scribes called at that time in the third month, in the month of Sivan, on the three and twentieth day thereof. And it was written according to all that Mordecai commanded unto the Jews and to the lieutenants and to the deputies and the rulers of the provinces, which are from India unto Ethiopia, 127 provinces, unto every province according to the writing thereof, and unto every people after their language, and to the Jews according to their writing and according to their language. And he wrote in the king's, and he wrote in the king Ahasuerus' name, and sealed it with the king's ring, and sent letters by post on horseback, and riders on mules, camels, and young dromedaries, young camels. Mordecai and Esther composed the decree, sealed it with the king's ring, and sent it, and, and made copies, and sent that letter to every province to, to a, a new decree, to offset the previous decree that had been sent by Haman to destroy the Jews. Verse 11, wherein the king granted the Jews which were in every city to gather themselves together and to stand for their life, to destroy, to slay, and to cause to perish all the power of the people and province that would assault them, both little ones and women, to take the spoil and to take the spoil of them for a prey. Upon one day in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, namely, upon the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month Adar. Ladies and gentlemen, Mordecai and Esther wrote that decree, authorizing every Jew to rise up, do whatever is necessary, and not only the Jews, but the people, the leaders around them, the rulers around them, the uh, leaders to rise up and defend the Jewish people, to slay, to kill, to destroy anyone attacking the Jewish people. So the posts that rode upon mules, verse 14, and camels went out, being hastened and pressed on by the king's commandment, and the decree was given at Shushan the palace. Verse 15, and Mordecai went out from the presence of the of the king in royal apparel of blue and white and with a great crown of gold and with a garment of fine linen and purple and the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. Woo! Mordecai, the old Jew who was walking the streets in sackcloth and ashes is now second in charge of all of Persia. And in every province and every city whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day, and many of the people of the land became Jews. Many people became Jews, for the fear of the Jews came upon them. And the rest of this you'll see about the great victory, of the people who were killed in many provinces, even in Shushan, and um, how Esther and Mordecai had gotten the favor of the king to save the Jewish people. You don't see God's name anywhere in this, in this book. But there are four verses that give you, that use the name of uh, Yahweh in, in letters. No, uh, in, in just the um, letters, no vowels. But you'll see Yahweh's name throughout this. But in, in interpretation, uh, translation, you don't see God's name in this whole book, but you see his mighty hand upon the Jewish people. And so they eventually decree a certain day, of, a certain time of the year for the Feast of Purim. 
pure, meaning they had drawn lots. Haman had drawn lots for what day he would slaughter and kill the Jews. And so the, the Jews named this feast after the pur, the lot that had been drawn against him to destroy them. And they celebrate every year. They're commanded to celebrate every year the deliverance from Haman's plot. Um, so what a mighty, what a mighty, what a mighty book. Uh, how God used the queen. Used a, a pretty little girl who became a pretty little woman who was a Jewish woman who did not let anybody know her identity, who was obedient to her father. And at a time like this, at a certain time, she became the deliverer of a whole race of people. And we, we uh, pull out of this um, Mordecai saying to Esther, we know deliverance is going to come, but don't think that your father's house or you will be spared. But it just might be, Esther, that you have been brought into the kingdom for a time like this. Hallelujah. Loretta Jackson, Karen Herzog, Ryan Trugler, Jackie Carter, Gene Bratton, Sam Gale, David, down there in Lower Marion, Pennsylvania. It just might be You've been brought into the kingdom. Florence Gaffney, Elijah, Jacko, all my friends in Kenya, it just might be. You've been brought into the kingdom for a time such as this. When things look dark, when things look like they're devastating, when, when, when things look like they're overwhelming, or like King David said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. God's got the plan, ladies and gentlemen. No matter how dark it gets, no matter how overwhelming it may be, you trust in the Lord. God might have put you in the kingdom for a time like this. God has raised up a lot of people, a lot of nobodies, to tell everybody about somebody who loves everybody. I'm just a nobody. Telling everybody about somebody who loves everybody. I'm just a nobody. I'm called to tell everybody all about somebody who loves everybody. It just might be you've been planted in the kingdom for a time like this. And as you trust in the Lord, as you obey the Lord, as you take your orders from the Lord, as you seek the Lord, as you fast and pray, as you stay in the word of God, as you obey the Holy Spirit, God will reveal to you what your plan is. You may say, well, I'm 75 years old. I'm 80 years old. What else can I do? Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Caleb was 85 years old. Caleb, old man, Caleb was 85 years old when he said to Joshua, when, last time we came through this area, giants prevailed. They're still here. Now you're giving out this property. I don't want my posterity, my 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 descendants, to have to fight these giants all these all their lives. Give me this mountain. Perhaps oh, I'll drive yeah. these Anakim out. Ladies and gentlemen, praise God. You're never too old to do what God has called you to do. Trust the Lord. Seek God. Mm -hmm. Seek God that you may accomplish what he has put you on this planet to do. Let's give God the glory, the honor, yeah. and the praise. Let's, and, 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 and it cannot be done if we regard bitterness in our heart. You can't, you can't, you can't be hating white folks. You can't be hating black folks. You can't be hating uh, 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 brown folks. You can't be hating. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Bible says the Lord will not even hear me. You can't even hate anybody. You can't even hate the people who have done you wrong. You've got to love. You've got to walk in the love of Jesus. You look at Jesus hanging on the cross and, and, and looking at the very ones killing him and looking down on the line to the year 2020. Father, forgive them, 
They know not what they do. Forgive them. They know that we've got to have that same attitude Jesus had. Forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. They just follow the crowd. They got the wrong advisors. They turn their backs off. Forgive them, Father. And seek every opportunity you can, ladies and gentlemen, to teach people about Jesus. Walk in love. Walk in love. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. Mordecai, Mordecai, for Mordecai the Jew was next unto King Ahasuerus, and great among the Jews, and accepted of the multitude of his brethren, seeking the wealth of his people, and speaking peace to all his seed. And uh, Ezra records in the second chapter of Ezra, verse 2, Mordecai, the same Mordecai, who had risen from obscurity to the second ruler in the nation, was one of those returning from Babylon in that second wave of captives to be released from slavery. Hallelujah. Father God, we just bless you and praise you and thank you and honor you for this word, for your study, for your anointing, for the revelation of your word for the presence of your Holy Spirit, that you've given us a record of your great works, that we not only have a record of your great works, but we see your mighty hand moving every day, that you're moving right now in this nation and in every nation. Lord, forgive us of our sins. Help us to be open unto you. Help us to yield our spirit to you, Holy Spirit. Father, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven, and we give you the praise. Continue to strengthen your people. Give them a hunger for your word and help us to teach others. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. We're going to turn uh, this lesson over to the hands of Esther, I mean Jackie Carter, okay? Um, and she will direct you from here. Wow. Um, there are no questions in the chat, but um, CK did have, have a comment, and I responded to it, but I know that you can go a lot more in depth. Uh, CK, if you will, um, unmute yourself if you are muted, and if you would share that comment. Okay, uh, I noticed that uh, in the entire book, there is never a reference of anyone praying. They fast, but almost always in the Bible, when it mentions fasting, it also mentions praying. And it seems, which seemed really bizarre, I went through this book several times, um, that... Um, there's never a mention of anybody ever praying. Now, of course, um, those that were with the people of the, that country couldn't openly pray, but it does seem like there would have been some reference to praying somewhere. Okay, and my response to her uh, well, to that statement is the fact that I also noticed that, but it was my assumption, and that was just um, what I could get out of it, that because they did um, adhere to the Jewish practices of fasting and even Mordecai with the way that he grieved, that they were practicing Jews, which meant that along with their fasting, they were praying. And again, there were um, indirect references, I guess, to um, to God, even though He wasn't stated, um, in, never mentioned in the book. So I'll let you elaborate on that a bit more, sir. Here is um, a note I have for, from the Dakes Bible, my reference Bible that I use. Esther's reply to Mordecai was that the Jews should fast and pray for her, that she and her maidens would do likewise, 
and then she would go into the king, though it was contrary to the law. She consecrated to perish. She consecrated herself to perish if need be. Okay. Um, the Hebrew day began at sunset, and one complete day was 24 hours. Thus night and day meant fasting the whole time. Mordecai went to get the Jews to fast and pray in cooperation with Esther and her maidens in such affliction that they might move the God of heaven to touch the heart of the king to spare Esther and her people. That's um, from chapter 5 of Esther. Okay? Um, yep. So it's, so it's I coupling, add? coupling, combining fasting and prayer. Uh, this, yes. we're, we're looking at this that we know that Mordecai and Esther were serious enough to know that fasting ain't going to do it. Fasting, fasting means, if, fasting is not just missing meals and, 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 uh, and turning down carbohydrates. Um, fasting is staying before... The whole concept of fasting is staying before the Lord in prayer, in a humble in humble submission, and praying. The two are synonymous, indivisible. That's the way we look yes. at it. And then, and then add this to uh, to the explanation, CK, and ladies and gentlemen, that um, this book that was written by Ezra is written based on the historical record that was kept by the Medes and the Persians. Okay? And the Medes and the Persians were, were very, uh, very careful to leave out references to the God of the Jews. Remember, the Medes and the Persians worship all kinds of so-called gods, but they did not worship God Almighty. It was Cyrus the Persian who actually decreed that the Jews would leave, be set free from slavery. So you don't find anything in the records, in the chronicles. So Ezra is using uh, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the guidance of the Holy Spirit. He does implant God's name in this book on four different occasions by using, making capital bold letters in four different places, but there's, there's uh, really no reference to God because he's looking at the Persian and, and Median record of these events, which do not, uh, um, do not promote God Almighty. So there's no reference to God, but we know based on the historical record and, and the, 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 the directions God has given his people from the beginning of time, fasting and praying are synonymous. They go together. Yes. CK? Um, okay. I just found it interesting that Fasting and praying are always mentioned together in all the other books, but not in this one. Yes, yes, yes. yes. But it's assumed. May, may it's I? assumed. The, this is one thing that we should assume as Christians, that fasting and praying go together. That um, yes. one does not stand alone. Praying is praying. Praying is good. But when you fast, when you fast, and, 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 and it's, it's built in. It's built in. It's built in. And we see this in Mordecai. We see this in Esther. It's built in. Get the people of Shushan to fast and pray with me, Esther says. And what she's saying is, and it's not, it's not in, the, in the Median or the Persian record, and it's not written in, in, in this book. But what she's saying is, and, and, and every Jewish person knew at that time, and we know as Christians at that time, that she's saying, fast with me three days. Hopefully, we can move the heart of God. Mm -hmm. And that's got to be added to that 
um, CK. It's not a man-made addition, but we know based on Scripture, fasting and praying moves the heart of God. When Paul was knocked off his animal and carried into the city of Damascus, blinded, out of his mind, he had heard the voice of Jesus. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It's hard to kick against the pricks. Then the Bible tells us Paul fasted and prayed. He fasted and prayed. And then God sent the prophet to him. And the prophet laid his hand on Paul's eyes, and the scales fell off his eyes. Fasting and prayer goes together, CK, ladies and gentlemen. Fasting and prayer is a powerful combination to touch the heart of God, whether God's name is mentioned or not. And by the way, let's let's be real about this. We don't give the Muslims or the Sikhs or the Hindus or atheists or the witches any credit for anything. We don't even open any door for them because they all fast. And they pray. Ramadan is all about fasting and praying. But you can fast and pray. Muslims can fast and pray. The hell freezes over. Ain't nothing going to happen. But when we fast and pray to God Almighty, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, even though we don't tell anybody who his name, we know, ladies and gentlemen, we've been born again by the Spirit of God. We know in whom we have believed. Mm-hmm. I think I'll leave it there, CK. May I may I say something, uh, Apostle Carter? Certainly. Um, I I'm going to tag on to what you said. Um, yes. If you read any um, Jewish history and about um, anything about how they worship God, fasting and praying always went together. But secondly, I'd like to say there's no mention of God in Esther, but you know that his hand was in it all the time. And as the story goes along, so by them not mentioning praying and just fasting, like there's no mention of God, you already know that his hand is in it. You know that fasting and praying are twins. They're one of the twins in the Bible, like uh, uh, grace and mercy. There are twins in the Bible. They're one of the sets of twins. Okay. Thank you, Dr. G. Anyone else mm-hmm. have any comments or insights that they would like to share? One of the things that I picked up was the fact that the king was definitely um, a party boy. <laughs> he loved to party. He loved to entertain. Um, he he was um, he liked to drink and enjoy himself. But he was also double-minded, wishy-washy to me. It's like whoever offered something, it was okay with him. He went along with it. And he wasn't wise enough to investigate it. Um, but he, he definitely liked to entertain. I mean, six months of partying is, is a lot. And then after you finish that, you do another week. Um, mm-hmm. But during that that party and phase and his drinking, then he was not of sound mind. And so he made a lot of, of um, unwise decisions during those, mm-hmm. those periods. And even with mm-hmm. the fact, and, and, and it, it's God's providence, because even with the fact that he was under the influence, he did listen to the, to, um, to the advice to, to look for another queen. Um, and I do admire uh, Vastai for uh, maintaining some sense of integrity and not mm-hmm. allowing her husband to 
parade her in front of other men. Right. Uh, so um, even though it may seem as if she lost out in my book, she did not. But it was it was designed that way so that Esther could uh, come in and and become queen and of course save her people. Um, the other mm -hmm. thing I noticed though is that um, the 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 cry for young virgins and the fact that these young girls were actually used um, by the king and mm -hmm. um, pretty much once he had had his way with one then she no longer went back to the group of virgins but she became a concubine which means yes. that she was there to serve him at his pleasure if <laughs> he ever had the desire to serve her again so again, mm -hmm. there were things about Esther that allowed her to be set apart. She was who she was. Um, she mm -hmm. didn't flaunt it. Uh, when she was told that she could take anything with her when she went to see the king, she, you know, just whatever it is that I'm supposed to take, whatever you tell me, that's what I'm going to take, and that's it. So to me, she also had an humbleness about her, humility. Um, and she was obedient. And her obedience mm -hmm. did pay off, but she was also crafty. Um, even though she was young, and, and I don't know how young, even though she was young, she knew how to behave like a woman to get what she wanted. Uh, when she dressed in her royal robes, she knew how. She knew what to put on. She knew how to dress, mm -hmm. how to appeal, how to get his attention, and she knew where to stand so that he wouldn't notice her. So she didn't. Even though it was a risk that she took, she knew how far to go. And, and in essence, she really didn't have to go to him, but she made it such that he sought her, which was, which was good. And so she knew how to plan things to, uh, to, to get his attention and to get her way. Um, and, and she didn't, she didn't, make her request the first time or the second time. So she was a little coy. She she kind of played with him a little bit. Um, I, just to make I, put sure. on, I just thought I'd put on this dress because I know you like this dress. And and I just thought we'd just have a couple uh, cocktails together and, and uh -huh. celebrate. And, and, and I'm sure he bought the dress for her. I'm sure he, he provided it. That's a little inside joke. I'm sure he provided the Did dress I buy for this her. Dress? <laughs> no, you didn't buy this dress. <laughs> I'm always asking, uh, Karen, I'm always asking Jack, oh, did I buy that dress for you? <laughs> Let's end the, the recording, okay? God bless everybody. Contact me, everybody, okay? We're going to end the recording.